One of the new functions we have added in Arcade is called Git User. And Git User is now available in Pro 2.7 and Enterprise 10.9. Git User is a function that allows you to return the current user executing that context, whether this is in a pop-up or in an attribute rule. And in this video, I want to show how we can use Git User to prevent editing based on your context. And which I'm going to show an example where I have a utility network with two domain network, a transmission network, and a distribution network. And I want to do use the git user function, write an attribute rule to only allow distribution users to edit distributed data, distribution data, and transmission users to only edit transmission data. So we don't have cross editing, right? So that's what the goal of this fun, uh, of this video. So this get user function, let's go through this, uh, the signature a little bit and then go through the code and then go through the demo. So a get user can take either a portal or a feature set. And optionally, you can give it the user ID from which you want uh, to what you want to return the user object to. And an optional true or false, whether you want to return the user extensions of that user, whether, uh, for example, this user have the user type extension for utility network, parcel fabric, and other uh, user, new user type extensions as well. So this is the return type. This is how it looks like when you actually call it. Uh, you can get back uh, the ID, which is, uh, and I think, alphanumeric number. And that's the username that we use basically to log in. The full name of the user, the email, and, and an array of groups, whether this is, a, I know, you, you are in an electric group, water group, distribution group, uh, transmission group. This is what we're going to use in order to prevent editing based on your group uh, permission. Role, uh, whether you're an admin, publisher, user, viewer, or any custom rule. Privileges, this is like a fine grain privileges and the user license type X. So here's an actual example of how the return type will look like. So the ID, the unique identifier, username, the full name, and the email and the groups as an array. And this is how it looks like as the fine grain privileges. You can use this to, to control in the attribute rule so many things. So let's take an example of a script that I wrote that essentially enforces this. So I'm going to add this attribute rule, and I already added to my utility network on all my distribution classes. So what it does, it opens up a portal object of the current op, uh, active portal, which is this one in this case, and then use the get user function and passing the portal object. You can obviously use a feature set as well, and we're going to try as much as possible to retrieve that user, whether this is a client server or enterprise. The next thing I'm going to do is get the groups and then find the distribution. If that user belongs to the distribution group, return true, that means they can edit, else they cannot edit. And the same thing with the transmission, except I'm looking for the transmission group. How about we jump into the pro and find out how this actually works. So now I'm logged in here as the distribution user, and you can look at the pro that I have actually part of the distribution group here. Now, if I want to edit a distribution class, like I'm going to create a new circuit breaker, you can see that this edit actually succeeds. However, if I want to edit a transmission data, let's say I want to create a transmission device, this edit will fail. And this is the error that we get back. And that's the, the error that I'll get it back because I created a constraint rule. So that's a basic summary of the git user function in the context of attribute rule. Thank you. Thank <music> you.